Let's look at how capillary exchange works. You have three types of blood vessels. There are arteries. These are what carry blood away from the heart. So arteries are taking blood to your capillaries. You have the capillary where exchange occurs. And then you have the vein that takes blood back to the heart. So it takes it away from the capillary. So in this picture, we have an arterial. This is bringing blood from the heart into the capillary. This middle part represents the capillary where exchange is occurring. Blood flows through the capillary, it exchanges with the cells, then it goes to the venule which takes it back to the heart. We have two forces that cause exchange in the capillary. One of those forces is hydrostatic pressure. Here's a demonstration of hydrostatic pressure. Let's use this water bottle to understand hydrostatic pressure. Water pushes against the walls of its container. So if I poke a hole in this water bottle, the water squirts out. Notice the water's not just dripping out, it's actually squirting. There's force pushing it out. As the level of water gets lower, then there's less force pushing the water out and it won't squirt out as forcefully. So you can see that as the level of water goes down, the stream of water is not going out as far. The other force that we are dealing with is colloid osmotic pressure. Here's a demonstration of colloid osmotic pressure. You learned about colloid osmotic pressure in chapter 18. Remember how plasma proteins hold water in the blood? Here are the water molecules. Here is the plasma protein. If you have plasma protein, it attracts water. Colloid osmotic pressure is the plasma protein pulling water into the blood. So now you know what these pressures are. Hydrostatic pressure pushes out. Colloid osmotic pressure is your plasma proteins pulling in. These two forces work against each other. So the third force that we're going to have is net filtration pressure. This is the sum of the two opposing forces. So now let's look at what's actually going on in a capillary. As blood enters the capillary at the arterial end, you have a hydrostatic pressure of 35. So that means there's a force of 35 pushing fluid out of the blood. You also have plasma protein in there, and that plasma protein is pulling in. It is pulling in with a force of 21. So you have 35 pushing out, 21 pulling in. Think of it like a tug of war. These are two teams fighting over what's going to happen to the fluid in the blood. Well, in this case, 
the pushing out wins. It's the greater force. It wins by 14. So you have a net filtration pressure of 14. This means that in the arterial end of the capillary, filtration occurs. Since hydrostatic pressure pushing out is greater than colloid osmotic pressure pulling in, you have a net movement of fluid along with the nutrients and oxygen and hormones and whatever else it contains moving out of the capillary and into the tissues. This is how you deliver your nutrients and oxygen. Now we're ready to move to the venous end of the capillary. Remember with the water bottle, as the level of water goes down, there's less force pushing out. Since we had water leaving the capillary at the arterial end, there is now less water right here. Since there's less water, there's less force. So our hydrostatic pressure is now down to 16. We didn't lose any proteins though. Nothing changed with those. Proteins are too big to fit out of the capillary. So our colloid osmotic pressure is still 21. Now when we go to get our net filtration pressure, when we add these up, the colloid osmotic pulling in is the greater force. So now our net filtration pressure is inward and it wins, colloid osmotic wins by five. So now we have a net filtration pressure of five going in. So at the venous end of the capillary, reabsorption occurs. This means we have a movement from the tissue into the capillary. This is how you pick up the waste from your cells. Something you may notice if you compare those two net filtration pressures. At the arterial end, we had 14 out. At the venous end, we have five in. This doesn't quite add up. There's nine missing. So you do have more fluid go out of the capillary than returns to the capillary. This means that every time blood flows through a capillary, you leave fluid behind. This would cause edema. You would have fluid building up in your tissues, but you have a solution to this. Remember, physiology is all about problems and solutions. Your solution to this problem is your lymphatic system. You have lymphatic capillaries that intertwine with your blood capillaries. These lymphatic capillaries pick up this fluid that your blood leaves behind.
This is the source of lymph. Once that fluid is picked up by a lymphatic capillary, it is now lymph. The lymphatic system cleans and filters this fluid, then returns it to your blood. The lymphatic all flows up towards your shoulders, it connects to your subclavian veins, and the fluid is returned to the blood. This is our next chapter, so we'll get to learn more about the lymphatic system in chapter 21.